Okay, in this video, we are going to have a look at this little microcontroller board. It's called the SCAMP2. It's about the size of a stick of gum. It has two mounting holes on either end, so you can mount it on standoffs. And on board is a PIC microcontroller, which you can see here. This is the PIC 24FJ64GB202. So that's your typical microchip part number. Now what that means is a 16-bit microcontroller. It has 28 pins, runs on 3.3 volts, it has 64K flash, 8K of RAM, 4 UARTs, and 3 SPI ports and 2 I2C ports. Now next to the microcontroller, we have a chip here. This is a temperature sensor chip. This is the P2075. And it's connected to the microcontroller through the I2C bus. Now next to that chip is a GPIO expander chip. This is the PCA9555. It has 16 outputs and that's dedicated to drive 16 LEDs which you can see above the chip there. Now on the very left we have a, a user LED and it is connected up to RA2, GPIO pin RA2. Now the whole board is powered by 3 volts and it gets it through this voltage regulator right here. It's a GH27G. Now during development we plug in our USB connector to our computer on the very right. It's a micro USB connector so we get 5 volts input to the board then the voltage regulator takes it down to 3.3 volts. Now when you run your project, you could actually power your project through the VIN pin, which is on the very right. Okay, to connect external devices to the microcontroller board, we could use the control bus on the bottom of the board. So on the bottom of the board, there's a single row female header. You can see here. So we could plug in DuPont cables, and we could connect it to any external device. Now if you look at the labeling, we have GPIO pins labeled 0 to 12, so we have 13 GPIO pins that we could use. The ones that have the white background are the analog to digital converters, so 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, and 10, 11 is for the ADC inputs. But we could use 0 to 13 as general purpose GPIO. Then we have pins for uh, power output, so we could snag 3.3 volts and ground. And here's our SCL and SDA lines for the I2C bus. And we have two more power outputs, and then we have our VN where we power our project uh, with 5 volts externally. Okay, here's a simple block diagram of the SCAMP2 board. Now it comes pre-programmed with the fourth operating system. It's flash forth to make your programming a lot easier. And you can see everything is powered by 3.3 volts, and that comes off the voltage regulator. And the input to the regulator comes from the USB connector or from VN. Now we have a reset push button to reset the SCAMP board. We also have a user LED on GPIO RA2. Now we have an I2C bus. It's labeled SDA in SCL. And that's connected up to our temperature sensor, the PTC2075, and also our GPIO expander, the uh, PCA9555, which is driving the 16 LEDs. Now this is where you could uh, connect your own I2C uh, device on the bus. Now it has 13 GPIO pins labeled 0 to 12 and on the left you can see the labeling which we will see in the data sheet. So out of these uh, 13 GPIO we have PWM, we have GPIO either output to drive an LED or input to sense a push button. We have ADC analog to digital converter so we could input 0 to 3.3 volts and UART. And all these functions there is a fourth support for all, all these functions. There's fourth words to make your programming a lot simpler. Okay, I have the SCAMP2 board powered up. It's connected to my computer through the USB port. And I'm running TerraTerm. It's a serial terminal program. So we could send some simple commands into the board, into the fourth operating system, and we could control some of the LEDs. So we'll do some simple LED control. So if I type LED on, see our user LED comes on. If I type LED off, goes off. If I type blink, it blinks once. If I type blink, then type blink again. So I have blink, blink. You get it twice. Now I made a word, a fourth word called blinks, which is plural. So if I go five blinks, it should, it should blink five times. So now we have a look at the 16 LEDs. Now 16 LEDs, that's 16 bits. So if they're all on, that'll be 65,535, which is hex FFFF. So if I type FFFF and then LEDs, plural, they all come on. If I type zero 
LEDs. They all go off. If I type 0F0F zero F, zero F LEDs, you see we get 0, then F, then 0, then F. If I type 0 LEDs to turn them off. If I type 9 LEDs, you can see I get the 8 waiting and the 1 waiting, that's 9. That's just a simple programming, how to uh, program the LED array. And next we'll get into a little program, a little temperature sensor. Okay, I have a little program running where I'm taking a value from the temperature sensor and I'm applying it to my LED array, my 16 LED array. So the first LED is 20 degrees, next one is 21, so each, each LED is a degree. So if I put my finger over the temperature sensor, you see it going up. I take my finger off, she comes down. So that's a little example how we could use our LED array as a thermometer. Now here's my reset switch, and I press on my reset switch. You can see when she boots up, she goes into an LED test mode. Okay, I have TerraTerm up and running on my computer, and it's configured for 115.2K baud, and it's connected to the SCAMP2 board. And if I hit enter on my keyboard, I get an OK prompt, so we can send it some commands. So if I go LED on, my user LED comes on. If I type LED off, user LED goes off. If I type blink, it'll blink once. Now we can play around with the, the array of LEDs, the 16 LEDs. So we go F, 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 LEDs, plural. Now all 16 LEDs are on. If I go zero LEDs, they're all off. If I type free, it tells me how much flash and RAM I have left for programming. And if we look at the modules, this is the I2C scanner. So it's picking up hex 27 and hex 37. So hex 27 is the GPIO expander, that's the 16 LEDs, and hex 37 is the temperature. So if you added on your sensor to the I2C bus, it would show up on this, uh, on this scan. So we'll clear the screen. Okay, next, we could play around with the random number generator. So I just have to type random, look at the stack, and get a number, type it again, Look at the stack. One more time. So that's a random number generator. Now we can look at the clock frequency of the microcontroller. It's in kilohertz. So that would be 16 megahertz. So that's the clock speed of the microcontroller. Now we can look at the temperature sensor. Just type temp. Look at the stack. And it's 28.625 degrees. So it's giving us uh, two values in the stack. 28 is the whole number, whole number temp, and then 0.625 is the fractional. So if we go temp, drop, I drop off the fractional, it will just give us a whole temp, so that's 28 degrees. And it is hot here. I don't have my fans running. So that's our temperature. Now if you want to play around with the inputs, I'll clear my screen. So GPIO pin 7. We want to make it an input, so we go 7, input. So now it's an input, it's floating. Now we want to add a, a switch to it, so we have to put a pull-up resistor. So we go 7, switch, because we want to hook up a switch to it. So that puts up a, that puts a pull-up resistor on pin 7. Now if we have a look at pin 7, it's high because of the pull-up resistor. Now if we go pin 7, input again, now it's floating. Now we can go 7, pull down. Now if we have a look, go 7, get. It's 0 because we have a pull down resistor. Now if you want to make GPIO pin 7 an output, because we want to hook up a, an LED, we just go 7, output. Now it's an output. So 7, set, turns on LED. 7 clear turns off the LED. Another way of doing it, we could go 0, 7, out. That turns off the LED. We could go 1, 7, out. That turns on the LED. That's just a shortcut. So we'll clear the screen. 
Okay, next we're going to have a look at the analog to digital converter. Now I don't have anything connected, but inside the microcontroller, channel 29 ADC is connected to ground, and channel 30 ADC is connected to VCC. So if we, if we select channel 29, we go 29 channel, that will select it, and then we'll sample it. It's a zero because it's connected to the ground. Now we could select channel 30. So we go 30 channel. That selects it. And we'll go sample. It's 1023. So it's a 10-bit ADC. So we get 1023 for 3.3 volts. Now we could we could change that to a 12-bit ADC. So we go ADC 12. Now we sample, and we get 4095. So we could, we could change the resolution of the ADC by selecting ADC 12 or ADC 10. And we'll clear the screen. Now we'll look at some words. There's all the words that we could use, and we, we recognize some of them. There, there's about, and modules, that's our I2C scanner. Now here's our I2C words. We got start, and over here we got stop, we got NAC, we got ACK, send, receive. And over here is our PWM, so we got duty, we got PWM. Next is the UART, we got TX1 pin, we got U1 baud rate, U2 baud rate. Here's our GPIO, there's out, there's clear, there's set, there's get. There's LEDs, there's temp, there's LED off, LED on. So all these words we could use to make a very sophisticated program. Now you see on the very bottom, blinks. Now I actually wrote that and it put it into the dictionary. So if I type five blinks, it blinks the LED five times. So when I made that word, it put it in the dictionary. So when you make up your words, they'll be put in the dictionary so you could use them to make a very sophisticated program. Okay, now if you want to plug your scamp board into your breadboard, it's very easy to do. All you need is a single row mill to mill pin header and plug it in your breadboard like that. And then you can just plug your scamp 2 board onto the pin header. And now you can build all the circuits you want and inter interface it to the scamp 2 board. And then you can get some Vero board and you can solder the pin header onto the Vero board, the strip board and you can make your project permanent. So if you're interested in the SCAMP2 board, go online to the SCAMP2 website and on there has all the documentation how to get started and how to do programming so you can do fourth programming on a PIC microcontroller.